Hello, my name is Jim McGilvery and welcome to The Pipe Box, your source for all things piping. If you find this video useful, please give it a like and please subscribe to this YouTube channel to see more videos just like this in future. Today I'd like to do a tune with you. I'd like to do the traditional slow air, the mist covered mountains. I'd like to do it not just because it's a great slow air, but because it's one of our premier funeral tunes. It was played at the funeral of John F. Kennedy in 1963, at the funeral of the Queen Mother in 2002, and at the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II in 2022. Like so many of our slow airs, it started out as a song. It was written by a John Cameron of Balahulish in Scotland in 1856. It was not written out for pipes or published for pipes until 1922 when pipe major Willie Gray and drum major John Seaton published it. It also appeared in the Seaforth Highlanders book in 1936. Um, after that, it was widely adopted by the piping community. It's a great alternative to so many of our evergreen funeral tunes such as Amazing Grace um, and the flowers of the forest. It's in the key of B minor, which is a very dark key, so it's somber and evocative. Its melody can evoke deep sadness when it's presented just right, which is what we're here to talk about today. For the purposes of this session, I'm going to assume you know how to play grips, doublings, torlues, burls, and he throws. I may talk briefly about some of these movements, but if you're not comfortable playing them, perhaps this tune is not quite right for you yet. So let's begin by hearing the miscovered mountains on the practice channel. That's our tune, The Mist Covered Mountains. Let's have a look at it now. Bar 1 and 2 will tell us a lot. We see that the tune is in 6-8 time. That means there are two major pulses in every bar. Ho, bo, hee, hee, ho, bo. But within each of those pulses, are three beats. This is compound time. There are three beats within one beat. Six total pulses in each bar, like this. Ho, do, he, bri, he, adam, bo, do, ya, kanti, ho, hum, ba, bri, he. You want that pulse to be running through the entire tune in your head. 
you're not necessarily tapping that out with your foot you may just tap two beats per bar but within your head you have bum 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 now within that framework you're going to hold each quarter note dotted quarter note or dotted eighth note as long as you can so if we look at bar one we see two dotted quarter notes with a grip between them I'm going to hold that first B as long as I possibly can before I snap that grip in I'm going to play the grip as much as I can on the pulse I talked about grips in another video that I teach grips as being played slightly ahead of the beat with the actual ending of the grip on the beat. In this particular case and many other cases like it, we're going to aim for exactly on the beat for the grip in bar one. As long as you can in those two dotted quarters. In bar two, we start with a quarter note F. And again, you're going to make that F as long as you possibly can and then snap the grip in on the beat. The following F doubling is going to play squarely on the second pulse in bar two. And what I mean by that, in an F doubling, the G grace note, which starts the F doubling, is going to be played exactly on the beat. He bidi ha da ba dum bo. He bidi ha da ba dum bo ba dum. So the first two bars will hopefully sound like this. Long as you can and all the long notes. Bar three is much like bar one. Two dotted quarter notes separated by a burl. And again, I'm going to put the first low G on the burl squarely on the second pulse like this. One, two, three, burl, two, three, like that. Bar four is one of the technically more challenging bars in the tune. We have two groups of three, and the first note in each group is a dotted eighth note. You're going to play that dotted eighth note as long as you possibly can. The following B is very short, and it has an E grace note on it. That grace note on that B tells us that we don't want to play it deathly short. It wants to have some definition. So make sure that B is well heard. And the following three notes, again, hold the, the dotted eighth note B before the low A and the B. And that's line one. Line two is much the same. The very first bar, bar five, has two dotted quarter notes again, a D throw and an E doubling. And again, on the E doubling, we're going to put the G grace note of the doubling on the B. So I'll play bar four and five. <laughs> Then we have bars 6 and 7, and this is where your skill um, really gets tested in terms of expression. We have four groups of three notes, all exactly structured the same, starting out with a dotted eighth note, followed by a sixteenth, and then an eighth note. So we have four of these groups of three in a row. Your challenge is to keep them on the beat, but point them as much as you can, and pretty much all exactly the same, sort of like this, from bar five. So you can see how short the sixteenth notes are. I'm holding that dotted eighth note as long as I can, and the sixteenth is going to be very short. 
In those two bars, you really have to keep your focus. It's easy to lay off on one of those groups of three and have one of them come out quite round, and that kind of distorts the effect you're trying to create in the tune. So lots of pointing in bars six and seven. <laughs> That takes care of our first part. Second part, we now have the principles laid out of how we want to play the tune. Now we just need to apply them to the second part. The second part begins very much like the first part began. Two dotted quarter notes separated by a grip. Bar nine, the start of part two. Grip right smack on the beat. Now followed by another bar with two groups of three. And again, maximum pointing. <laughs> bar 11, we have a torlua, but the principle stays the same. We're going to hold that quarter note as long as we can and put a fairly snappy torlua in there on the low A and then up to the E, which again we're going to hold, the E at the end of bar 11. So I'm going to play the first three bars of the second part. Very, very long low A before the Torlua in bar 11. Bar 12, now we're seeing things starting to repeat and we pretty much know the rest of the tune. Bar 12. Bar 13, 14, 15, and 16. We've seen those principles before. So now you have the basic principles of how to play the mist-covered mountains. Let me give you some guidance on tempo. This is 6-8 time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oh, oh, he, he, a dumbo. This is 124 beats per minute, which I think is a good tempo for this slow air. I'm a big fan of singing tunes to metronomes while I'm learning how to play them. It gives you a really great sense of the rhythm and you can figure out the expression you want to play in the tune in your head and with your voice, whether it's in tune or not. You can figure out expression without your fingers getting in the way. Our fingers are a very limiting part of our musical um, expression. So 124 beats per minute. Don't be afraid to sing to it. Don't be afraid to play to it. If you've never played with a metronome before, you'll find it a little bit difficult the first time you do it. It takes some getting used to. It's an acquired skill. So sing to the metronome first just to get used to the pulses and then try to play to it. Again, we, we have a tune here that we're playing at a fairly slow tempo. Watch you don't speed up. Maximum pointing, ma maximum musical expression to evoke the sort of sadness that is actually in this tune. As I mentioned earlier, this tune was played at the funeral of John F. Kennedy in 1963. I'd like to play you a little excerpt of the media coverage uh, of that event. You'll hear the United States Air Force Band under Pike Major Sandy Jones playing the Miss Covered Mountains, and they play it absolutely beautifully.
That was the U.S. Air Force Pipe Band under Pipe Major Sandy Jones playing the Miscovered Mountains at John Kennedy's funeral in 1963. If, as a piper, you can emulate the expression that they played on that day, you will play some beautiful music and you will play some very moving funerals. From me, Jim McGilvery at the Pipe Box, good piping.